Good morning all, welcome back. I'm off to drop off the Fiat because the brake started binding badly about three days ago, so I need to get both front brake pads changed, so I'll do that. And literally just as I was about to leave, I got a call from Triumph, new press bike has been dropped off. So I'll drop the Fiat off, get back home, pick up the press bike, and then Monica and I will go into town for a coffee and I'll show you the new bike. Fiat dropped off and hopefully I should hear back in an hour or so. I did a poll yesterday on Instagram. I simply asked, what in your opinion is the coolest cafe racer motorbike available right now? There were three front runners. Third place, Royal Enfield Continental GT650. Second place, and this was seriously tight, Norton Commando Cafe Racer. And first place by a whisker. The bike inside now behind the Bonneville, Triumph Thruxton. Thruxton, 1200cc, 103 horsepower, 14,200 pounds. I will of course do a full review, maybe in one or two videos time after I've had a chance to ride it because I've got this for two weeks, but I wanted to put this and my Bonneville side by side, 2010 model, and 2021 model. So in essence, the absolute brand new model. So many similarities. Look at the shape of the engine. Look at the fins on either side and the shape at the top of each engine and the general proportions fairly similar, but the new crop of Triumphs, and I'm saying this because I haven't actually had a Triumph press bike for so, so long. I think it may even have been before the start of the channel that I got a Triumph press bike directly from Triumph, which I almost can't believe, but they have come on so, so far in terms of quality, the fit and finish of everything. I know this is a sportier model, so I'm not comparing exactly like with like, but beautiful rear suspension, fit and finish everywhere. The engine, the little details here, Triumph, since 1902 and have a look at this moniker just as i jump on beautiful chrome finish there everything is lovely lovely quality chrome chrome surrounds on the clocks as well twin clocks but have a look at this okay bonneville the way i sit on it just have a look at the stance bear in mind this is the big king and queen seat so it does raise the seat height a bit Beautiful stance on my leg, and I'm sitting like this. Okay? It's lovely. It's all day comfort. Have a look at this. Higher seat height, that's noticeable. Harder seat, that's less comfortable. And it's down there. It's such a different riding position from what is, at the very core, a similar bike, the Bonneville to the Thruxton but with these lower handlebars, it makes a very, very big difference. I was just about to get Monica to hop on, or ask her to hop on, and she said, where are the foot pegs? <laughs> there are no pillion foot pegs. So I took off the cowl thinking, okay, great, this is not comfortable, I'll be honest. Yeah, but it doesn't look comfortable. It's, yeah, it's agony, but I thought maybe for two minutes it'd be fine. And then I also <laughs> checked the Triumph contract, and it says very clearly, no pillion use. I have no idea why, but even if we wanted to with this, hmm. It will be me going on solo rides. Have a listen though. Have a listen to the sound of this. Lovely. Low 
understated throaty burble. It's very nice. And also, just before I leave you, because I'm going to leave Monica now, this bike is really stunning. Just, just looking at it purely from an aesthetic point of view, it's a really, really beautifully well-proportioned thing. Lovely design elements everywhere. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm going to be curious how I'll get on long term with the comfort, but... It, it looks but, a bit like BMW R90 from the front. Yeah, they've got a BMW R90 Cafe Racer as well that would be a direct competitor, although they stopped making that a couple of years ago. So you've got the Continental GT650, you've got the Norton Commando Cafe Racer, and that really is the head-to-head, -head, the Norton Commando versus this. So fascinated to see how this does, but it really is a stunning motorbike. Being called by the mechanic, this is what happens if you leave the service too long. £341. I hoped it would be maybe £50 for two front brake pads, but I let the brake pads get too low and it was metal on metal with a disc. So it needs two new discs, two new sets of pads. Windscreen wipers, they said, are so far beyond use that they don't do anything. They said, can we please change them? So I said, yes. And they said, by the way, there are also three bulbs out. Can we change those two? Yes, please. So that should be ready later today with any luck. But £341, slightly painful, but it has to be done. Fiat's just about to pass. 205,000 miles, still as perfect as ever. Nothing wrong with it. Monica just showed me a, a few comments that we'd received talking about the Africa trip and saying that actually they'd quite like to see a big trip in the Fiat. No bike, but just Monica, myself, Fiat, no trailer at all. So I have a question. If Monica and I were to consider a trip in the Fiat somewhere, where would you suggest? I'm thinking something on a similar scale to Morocco. So maybe five maybe even a bit longer, maybe 5,000 miles or so. It could be Europe or it could be further afield into Northern Africa, maybe heading over towards Bosnia, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. I would be so happy to hear any of your thoughts or ideas and what you think of a trip like that and some suggestions. Do you suggestions. think you can make it? Oh, the fit will go on for the rest of our lives. It will never die. Small, simple Italian cars never die because once really? everything on Italian and French cars is meant to have fallen off, has fallen off, then they go on forever. Mm -hmm. I was told that a few years ago mm -hmm. and I believe that 100%. So there's no question if it will never die. It will go anywhere. Okay, we'll see. Suggestions welcome. Monica's just said, why don't we drive it to India and then rent a few Royal Enfields in India? Mm -hmm. So we'd have to go into France, France through Germany, Austria, Poland, Oh, then you've got Ukraine and Belarus. You'd have to go... Mm. Then you've got Russia. Okay. You go through Turkey. Georgia. Maybe some of the stands. Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. How long that would take? Oh, maybe you could do it, actually. Turkmenistan. Basically go through every single one of the stands. Afghanistan, Pakistan. I don't know how safe that is now. Look, this would be a seriously risky trip. And then into India, surely that would have to be surely two and a half weeks solid driving. 
would be a guess. Should I put it onto Google Maps? Mm -hmm. Let me say Mumbai. Mumbai, India. Driving. Starting point. Ipswich. Can't find a way. <laughs> Cannot find a way there. Okay. We'll go somewhere else. Yeah, maybe somewhere. Maybe Lithuania. we should. Lithuania. Yeah. That's almost too easy. Lithuania. <laughs> For the Fiat, that's almost too easy. But yeah, maybe a summer trip to Lithuania. I like the India idea though. It's a bit too extreme. Yeah, but imagine if we made it there. I could pick up a Royal Enfield as well, second hand, ride that back. So we own convoy. <laughs> well, I was about to head off, but I can't without seeing this. I don't think I ever would have guessed that. Lambretta would be making a push for the mainstream. It's amazing to see. Brand new. 2023 Lambretta's on the road. A Vespa with a bit of edge. All of the style of a Vespa. But slightly more niche. I think that looks amazing. White, red seat, angular design. And with that classic it's got that beautiful classic Lambretta rear that just pulls in at the back. That's a really, really good job they've done with that. And this isn't bad either. So the forecast is good for the rest of the day. It's a Friday and I'm going to make the most of this Thruxton. I'll wrap it up now. Thank you so much everyone for coming along. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and let me know any tips or ideas on a good road trip with the Fiat 500.